Good morning. It's Monday morning, the 11th of May. How are you? Hope you had a great weekend. So we would pile in the car on our way to vacation with those little kids, and before we had been an hour into the drive, I would hear little voices from the back seat. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Oh, all they could think about was that destination. They had had glimpses in the pictures of the rental brochure of that beach house that was going to be their home for the next week, and they just wanted to get there. Even though it was a 10-hour drive, they wanted to know, are we there yet? Of course, (laughs) being the kind and patient dad that I was, sometimes the tone of my voice after I'd heard that question for the umpteenth time warned them to just don't ask it again. This experience of COVID-19 has made me like a kid wondering when it will ever be over. I find myself asking the Lord, are we there yet? Along with the desire to renew the patterns of life, I'm full of questions about what that life is going to look like when schools are back in session, when restaurants are open again, when churches gather in sanctuaries again, when we are told it's safe to gather as families again. Probably, I'm almost certain, it's going to take quite some time for us to feel a level of comfort that allows us to hug again, to sit in the company of friends, to resume those social engagements that were one just assumed to be a part of life. And there are a lot of even more significant questions than that that many of us are wondering about. We're, we're wondering, how, how am I going to come through this? Is there going to be a job to go back to? Some of us wonder that. How many institutions and or companies are going to fail because of this economic hard stop that the virus brought to our country? If you're feeling those things, if you're asking those questions, don't feel alone. Don't feel like you're strange or weird. A lot of us are full of uncertainty, some even more so than others. One evidence that I find interesting about this level of anxiety is the widely reported broken sleep patterns of people who say, I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming a lot, I'm dreaming these wild and crazy dreams. Yeah, it's evidence that your brain is working to sort it all out and try to make sense of the things that are so jarringly different these days. Let me encourage you to remind yourself of one thing. The world is not about to end. But here is the truth. Our world is changing. And nothing is more difficult for us human beings to navigate than change. We hate it. A lot of us have no idea how hard we work to maintain the status quo. But the fact is, you know it, I know it, so we need to deal with it. Life changes. Change is the only constant, as is said. And those who will adapt to change with faith and hope are those who emerge from those traumas with the best life, most intact emotionally and spiritually. I love this statement that uh, that's quote. It says, the pessimist complains about the wind. The optimist expects the wind to change. The realist adjusts the sails. That was said by somebody named William Arthur Ward. I don't know who he is, but I love what he said. Let me read it to you again. The pessimist complains about the wind. The optimist expects the wind to change, but the realist adjusts the sails. So we're going to get there, but it's a journey. In no way do I mean to minimize your struggle, nor do I want to suggest that the best response to your question, are we there yet, (laughs) is the one that I suggested to my little kids in the backseat of the car while we were on vacation. It's not a time to just shut up and put those questions inside Especially among those of us who are disciples of Jesus Christ, we have a real responsibility to one another. Paul, inspired by the Spirit, encourages us to something called mutual care. In Philippians, he writes, Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. Let me read that again. Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. We need to be patient with those people who need to talk it out, even when they go on and on. We need to absorb the storm that's kicked up by those who are angered by the change, trying to help them deal with that anger. We need to lovingly embrace and hold up those people who are just over, so overwhelmed with fear that they just have stopped living. 
We, we need to carefully encourage those who have lost sight of the destination to step up, to regain hope, to move forward. The word from the word I want to leave you with this morning has a key phrase in it, accept one another. It's a great word in the Greek New Testament. That's the original language of the Bible. And it actually is a compound word that means reach out and take somebody by the hand and help them along. Accept one another. God wants us to stay connected, to patiently encourage, to listen to the questions that are asked without becoming irritated, to be together as we move toward tomorrow. Here's the passage. I hope you'll spend a few moments meditating in this passage before you leave this morning on, to go on your way. Here's what Paul writes. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Jesus Christ, so that with one heart and mouth you will glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. Let me paraphrase that. Reach out and take one another's hand and encourage one another to move forward as you lovingly accept people where they are in order that you might bring praise to God. Romans chapter 15. Thanks for giving me a few moments to be with you this morning. Let's pray together before we part company. Lord, it's Monday morning and it's been a long slog and it looks like it's gonna be a lot longer. Lord, all of us are dealing with different kinds of uncertainties. I pray that you would help us to patiently wait, to lovingly engage with one another, to be people who trust you, but also people who do this, this change together. Lord, I pray for my friends who are fearful this morning, that you would speak peace into their life. I pray for those who are angry, that they would be willing to surrender that anger to you so that they do not sin in their anger. I pray, Lord, for all of us today to know the peace and the grace of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for this new week. Lead us day by day in this week to make the most of the opportunities that come to us so that we might live for the praise of the one who loves us deeply, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Have a wonderful day, friend. Thanks for letting me talk with you for a few moments this morning. Hope to see you right here again tomorrow morning for another Coffee Break with the Word. Until then, God bless and keep you. 